Oh, hello, hello. We were expecting lower lows since our last State of the Cryptos update and lower we got. As a matter of fact, we haven't really seen any kind of meaningful bounce in any of the coins. And the same applies to the stock market and various commodities as well. As a matter of fact, even oil start pulling back. So maybe you're going to see some relief in those gas prices nearby. But this is Bitcoin, the close-up chart. And these charts, of course, many of these will be available in the description below. So check out those links if you are interested. But we're going to go over, obviously, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Those are our main cryptos. They indicate sentiment most clearly for the entire sector, for the entire asset class, actually. And we're going to touch on several select altcoins. We're going to look at the long-term picture because some of our long-term pictures, our long-term patterns have actually shifted as this pullback has materialized. So this is Bitcoin up close 30-minute chart. We were expecting lower and we got lower. Are we done? We could be because this last bounce here looks like a three-way zigzag and this looks like a complete pullback. MACD divergence is there. So maybe it's a truncated bottom of some sort. Of course, Bitcoin doesn't give us the most clear picture. Ethereum gives us a little bit more clarity, especially because we had a proper Fibonacci extension based on the uh, original one, two to the downside. So we have our one wave, two wave. And again, this should be an impulse. So we more than got low, got more than low enough for this to be done. 1087 was the expected low. We got lower than that. We almost touched a thousand. We got down to about 1015. That has been our official low so far. And again, here too, we see that corrective looking bounce. And are we done? Do we have a little lower to go? Not sure, but I really wouldn't want to see us go too much lower because we've already stretched well below any original earlier expectations we may have had. Now, going over to our altcoins, this is Bitcoin Cash. And here too, we've basically gotten low enough, almost low enough in Bitcoin Cash. Some of the altcoins have actually stretched low enough. We could have, I was expecting us to get to about $98 or a little lower. So we're not fully out of the woods yet, but if we start getting some bullish action, maybe done. Ethereum Classic, as I mentioned, it's one of the more volatile cryptos and we did see a big spike back up and then a bit more of a pullback down. So again, we're seeing signs of bottoming. Are we actually done yet? It is not clear, but Ethereum Classic has certainly gone low enough for this to be a legit finish to the crash. Dash probably has the clearest chart right now. we got a one, two, third wave. Everything hit proportion. Fibonacci standard proportions almost perfectly with us uh, finishing right at the 2.0 extension of this one, two down. So we hit about 38, 60, something like that. And uh, here too, we're seeing signs of an impending reversal. This is not the most bullish development here. It looks like an ABC corrective wave. So we're going to see if we can hold the low or if we go a little bit lower. Chainlink, haven't looked at this as closely, but uh, you can see how we've had multiple bottoms and this latest crash has been a little ambiguous to say, say the least. Uh, we didn't quite have as much fall through as I would have expected. Um, we're going to see that on the bigger picture. May get some more clarity there. Stellar definitely looks more like a consolidation. Doesn't look like we're done yet. Looks like an A, B, C up. So maybe some kind of a fourth wave. And finally, EOS. We absolutely hit our expected targets based on the one, two above. Although we didn't have the best fourth wave bounce, we have enough in place to tell us that it's done. So we're going to have to see some continued upside action to convince us that we're going somewhere. So as I mentioned over and over, or as I've been mentioning, the stock market and cryptos have been essentially tied at the hip. So we're seeing very similar action in the stock market too. After a lot of downside action, we've stretched well below any targets we may have imagined before. And well, this is the, again, the S&P 500 futures, the ES mini futures. And we can see that we've had a bounce off of our low, but it doesn't look like an impulse. This looks like an A, B, C. It's clearly a three of correction with a deep pullback here. So it probably is too deep for a fourth wave. There's a chance we get our fifth wave up and maybe we get a leading diagonal to complete it. But right now it's looking like we have a little lower to go. And if that happens, that tells us that we may be seeing about 3610, 3600, something like that. Maybe as low as 3590, that would be my lower target. I don't want, I don't expect to go any lower. Uh, that would correspond to about 3600 SPX. So that's what we have there. Bigger picture, I did mention that uh, the stock market dipped far lower than I had expected. And it's about as low as we can go. Uh, this is the Dow big picture log chart. And we hit that red box I had below. I'm kind of still in disbelief that we went as low as we did as we had our top earlier this year. And it's been six months of chop. We got an A, B, and a final C wave. 
Is this the big fourth wave? It's looking more and more like it is, which would mean we have just one more rally left. However, there's the alternate interpretation that we actually have another, uh, well, we have a fifth of a third and then a final fifth. So this will be an interesting development. We're going to see how, uh, what we can glean looking at the stock market, commodities, bonds, and cryptos. We may learn something about the other asset classes from different kinds of asset classes. The stock market might give us a clue about cryptos or vice versa. So looking at Bitcoin, we've gone very deep. We've actually broken supports. Uh, this is definitely deeper than a standard support for a fourth wave retrace. So again, that should have been at 24,400. And we've basically hit the next fib down. We actually just broke that as well. And when we look at our MACD, what looked like a nice divergence has started to fall apart a little bit. Although arguably, we never really had the best divergence in Bitcoin itself. So when we count our downside action, if this really is a C wave, it definitely looks quite funky. I call this I mean, this is probably more likely a diagonal kind of pattern. So if we draw our trend channel lines, assuming this downside was the first wave, well, uh, that's probably a good place to put a channel. If I put the top side pattern here as well, convincingly a uh, downside channel. So again, one and a two, three, four, five. You can count it that way. It's not the prettiest action. It's not that standard looking. We have a little bit more clean action on some of the other coins bigger picture again we still have every reason to believe that there's a fifth wave coming because we don't have anything that looks like a clear fourth of consolidation i'm actually going to remove my drawings for just a second this was our bottom back in december of 2018 whether this was the actual bottom of the bigger uh fourth wave or this was not sure if we interpret this as a one two and that as a third clearly we would expect to have one more rally to finish the fifth wave otherwise it would be a one, two, three. Sure, you could call that a fourth, but we really don't have a proportionally correct fourth wave to call this entire pattern uh, complete. Although one could argue this was a fourth and this was a truncated fifth. So that is Bitcoin. Ethereum, a little bit different, very extreme correction, but we had a bit more cushion. Here too, though, we've broken our, well, our main support, 1151. So this is a much deeper than standard retrace. We're starting to lose MACD divergence. However, we haven't broken down past the 0.61 extension. So we're going to see if we see any more continued downside throughout the weekend. The weekend is just starting here. So here too, really funky pattern here. Who knows? Is that a one, two with a lot more downside to come? You don't know. But here too, just like with Bitcoin, we have the same situation where this could be an ABC or maybe it's a one, two, three, and we're in a fourth. But the fifth to come, multiple interpretations. So it's not the most clear pattern, big picture, although we have a lot of confluences overhead as to where we can go. In either case, Bitcoin or Ethereum, I'm going to stick with Ethereum here. We expect our final rally to take ending diagonal form, and that would take us possibly into the confluences overhead. I know I've seen some other targets in other channels that are uh, calling for uh, 7,000 plus. I know there's some confluence there a couple of years out. Timing wise, I would expect this to top with the stock market. They expect to see some kind of a confluence there. Uh, and it should be taking the form of an impulse as we're seeing here. Bitcoin cash. So this is a re relatively recently revised pattern. I have declared that this is best identified as an AB. Therefore, we have one C wave left to finish this top. So our topping target has really never shifted. We have a lot of confluence that $4,000 mark. It is also a strong resistance. That was uh, just about where our all-time high was. Ethereum Classic, this was looking like one of the more promising cryptos, especially when we interpret this as a one, two, one, two. But here too, I have shifted our interpretation that this is actually an A and a B with the final C wave to come to complete our fifth wave up. Dash. This is kind of in that, uh, I guess, bit of a yellow light warning. I know that EOS has broken our support that we had on March 2020, in March of 2020. So there's a chance we have a bit more continued downside action and reset the entire fifth wave. That would mean that this entire ABC was one continuous fourth wave correction. That's what the orange alternate pattern here is. The red primary, however, will hold as long as we respect the support around 34, 33. If we can hold that support, that means we have one more C wave coming to take us well into this purple box where exactly depends, but 
there is reason to believe we could see well past 2000 if things hold together and continue their upside action from last year. So this is Chainlink. Chainlink is a bit more ambiguous, again, because we don't have as much history. This could be a fourth wave or a second wave. I know initially I was looking at this as if it were a second wave, but I have revised my interpretation to see this as a fourth wave. With one final fifth wave to come, that would give us an entire five wave structure up that goes past our standard expectations. Stellar lumens. This is one I've uh, updated not too long ago. Same kind of thing, A, B, with a final C wave to come. Similar pattern that I'm seeing in Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum. They're all following very similar uh, shapes with corrective looking rallies. And this EOS, as I mentioned earlier, we did break our 2020 support. And therefore, after our third wave top back in May of 2018, we've had one continuous correction that I'm now labeling as the major fourth wave with one more fifth wave to come. That could get us somewhere in this box, somewhere north of $23. Again, we need a lot more upside action before we're ready to call this correction done. The SPX looks a little incomplete. Note that we do have the Juneteenth holiday, so the stock market will be closed this coming Monday. Oftentimes, you see sentiment build up over the weekend, and if there's any kind of shift, you see a dramatic change the following week, so you never know. Maybe we have a gap down in the S&P 500 opening on Tuesday, or maybe the futures bottom overnight and we have a tremendous gap up, especially because we've had an ending diagonal correction in the stock market. Perhaps we'll see the same kind of thing in cryptos. There's a chance that maybe cryptos will run ahead. Maybe we have a slight lower low in cryptos ahead of the stock market because again, cryptos trade 24 seven around the clock. So maybe we get a dip in cryptos that is followed by a very brief dip, dip maybe late Sunday night, late Monday, Monday night, something like that in the futures market for the S&P before finally ready to put this correction back behind us. So in summary, although we've broken some supports, we are very stretched down and it's a matter of time before we turn around. If we do have a much more bearish pattern in place, I'm actually going to pull my Ethereum chart back up because it's a little bit less cluttered. If that is the case, I would still expect some kind of a bounce. So expect a lower low and some kind of a corrective bounce. If we see that, that could indicate that we're entering our crypto bear market early. So right now, that is not at all the primary expectation, not even the secondary tertiary. It could be like maybe like the, the interpretation 3B, something like that. So we got a, a lot of work for us to reclaim the momentum. And uh, well, things are always most painful and pessimistic at the bottom. Going to have plenty more updates coming our way, including a video on the, uh, the long-term relationship between the stock market and cryptocurrencies, as we've been seeing a lot of uh, coincidental inflection points. So again, subscribe so that you don't miss those. Give me a like if you enjoyed my video. And until next time, thank you for watching and happy trading.